Greetings and welcome back to 50 Shades of Beige. Today I've got a special video. This is going to be a super quick one, so sorry for the mess and everything. We're going to hop right into it. I was watching Phil's Computer Lab uh, last Tuesday, and he had mentioned that he was interested in how to get a capture card working on a mini PC. And being the evangelist of jank that I am, I just couldn't help but make a video on how to do that because it's really not as cut and dry as it is for eGPUs. Generally, eGPU docks are gonna come with some sort of a power supply or expect you to plug in an external power supply over here. That's because our M.2 slot definitely cannot put out 70 watts and it's gonna be missing some voltages more than likely. And I say more than likely because this is where things get a little crazy. So I wasn't able to find any solid info on this, but I did come across this Sabriant Informer blog post from 2022, where they talk a little bit more about how NVMe drives work with power delivery on M.2 slots and so on and so forth. And you can see here, they have this interesting P-state table, which they did source from NVM Express, but unfortunately this link is dead. Uh, and I thought it was interesting that they have maximum power listed here, P-state zero. 25 watts and i know this is purely hypothetical but that is kind of interesting to see because i'm not aware of any nvme drives that draw quite that much wattage yet and you can see down here this is what i'm talking about it says a normal maximum for m key is about 11 and a half watts the m.2 m key specification has nine pins for voltage supply rated for 3.3 volts and are not supposed to exceed 0.5 amps per pin which yields a maximum of about 15 watts. This will become doubled with the new M.2.1a standard, so on and so forth. High-end, capacious M.2 NVMe drives can pull more than this, and there is no firm limit, but drives are designed to run within reason, right? So it's like, can we, can't we? We don't really know yet, but we're gonna find out, and that's why we're here today. So first up, we've got our Dell Optiplex here. This is a 9020 model. It's got a Core i5 9500T in it, six cores, six threads, really nothing special. Now I hear you say, well, Shades, why don't you just use one of those cheap USB capture cards? I mean, those work fine. And to that I say, yes, they do work fine. However, they're not ideal for every situation. Um, a, they're not super reliable. They're, they don't like certain resolutions. Um, you can get frame skips and things like that. But more importantly, in order to fit the video stream into whatever cheap chip that they're using to like transcode and feed the video back into your computer, um, they cut down the color. So it's not really a huge deal in most situations, but in some situations you can really tell a difference. And that's why Phil was mentioning that he wanted to do this. I went ahead and picked this Avermedia Live Gamer HD2 capture card mostly because it's a really popular card and it's been out for a while, and also because it has a PCIe 1X interface there. So here's our card here. Inside the box, we just have an aux cable for audio, HDMI cable, a couple of things in case you need help setting things up and so on and so forth. This is not a capture card setup video, but we will do like a brief tutorial on how to set this up, assuming that it works. So one thing to take into account is if you're going to use your only M.2 slot, which most mini PCs do only have one, then you're gonna to have to find another way to do storage. Uh, luckily on this Dell machine, I do have regular SATA storage as well. You can also use USB, but just be mindful because it can be a little slow and if you're writing video to it, it might not be the most efficient way to capture video. Let's just put it that way. All right, here we go. And of course, in the true spirit of jankery, I do not have screws that go into these holes, but I think it'll be fine for now. We're just doing a demonstration. This certainly is not permanent. So what you're gonna do is get your M.2 adapter in here, and then you're gonna layer this over the top. And here's where things get interesting. You notice I had a by four connector. We really only get like part of the connector here because the SATA drive takes up some of that and it's just that's the way it is. There's not much we can do about it. Oh, and we run into our first problem, which is our IO shield. That's going to have to come off. So I guess we're going to do a quick dissection. 
Let's see what's inside this bad boy. I can't be the first person to take one of these apart. By the way, if you're new, in, new to the channel and you want to see more of this type of content, I have several videos where we've done this sort of thing with mini PCs. We like to stick to a budget here at 50 Shades of Beige. So that dictates that sometimes we do less than advisable things with computers and we like it. This is really for advanced cooling features. That's why we're taking this apart. We wanna make sure that our capture card is cooled to the max. We don't need this stinking thing. It's just a restrictor plate at this point. Now, just a reminder, best practice dictates that you keep track of all your screws and you do this on an anti-static mat. I do this type of thing all the time, so I'm not terribly worried about it. I've got my screws over here. I know which ones go where. I'm not, I'm not too scared to uh, leave that stuff there. But if you're doing this on your own, be sure to keep track. Alrighty, and just like that, we're in like Flynn. This is gonna be our setup here. It is particularly jank. Okay, I've got everything plugged in here. I'm just gonna try an internal capture first. Um, I'm more interested to see whether or not we can survive without adding power from an external power supply. Because if you need to add an external power supply, that's going to change the scope of your project considerably. So let's take a look. So far, it's not looking promising. The LEDs here are not coming on. And that would actually add up because those LEDs probably require five volts. Oh, nope, there they go. Okay. All right, and I see the giant Dell logo. It looks like we are in business. Let's go ahead and see uh, if the actual capture works. It looks like we're doing okay here. Lots of flashing. The BIOS is definitely a little confused. And that's one thing to note. Um, if you're working with a machine that uses M.2 primarily for storage, which most machines will, um, you're going to want to turn off the option to boot from M.2 entirely. Uh, otherwise, a lot of times the BIOS will get hung up trying to boot because it sees there's a device there and it thinks, oh, it must be a drive. It must be able to boot off of this thing. But in reality, obviously it can't. So just bear that in mind. You might need to play around with your BIOS settings a little bit in order to get to a point where you can actually boot into Windows. All right, we've got uh, the capture card basically set up as a pass through right now just to do a test. And it looks like we're all good to go. We successfully booted without a problem, and we're here in Windows now. And if I open up OBS Studio, yeah, it's going to give me that error, but let's see what we've got real quick. And there's our video capture device, Intermedia Live Gamer HD2. This is a little bit of an older model. However, you can find them for relatively cheap if you look hard enough, and if you go to configure video, I'm sorry, not configure video, but there is definitely a big difference between the limited capture and the full capture with regards to the depth of the color. You can also define the color space. So, you know, if you want to look into that, you can. But this card should give you all your color options that you're looking for. I am very pleased to see that the card works just fine without any supplemental power. So you actually don't need a full on eGPU setup. Now there are other types of M.2 to PCIe adapters you can use. Some of them have different types of cables and extenders and things like that. Like this one basically is similar to what we're using, but it has this cable that runs off of it. These cables are extremely expensive and very fragile, so bear that in mind. You're basically hooking a PCIe riser cable into an M.2 slot, so just be careful there. Um, I don't recommend going any further than 20 centimeters. I know they sell an 80 centimeter version for $118, which is just insane to me because PCIe does not deal well with high latency. And the longer that cable gets, the more latency and signal loss you're going to have. Now, alternatively, you can find something like this, uh, this ADT PCIe 4.0 M.2 key. I have something similar to this. I did not pay $20 for mine. I think that's kind of insane. I literally paid $1.50 for my adapter and I'll have it linked below. 
Um, but if you want something that's a little more secure, maybe higher quality than what I'm using, this is a good option as well. So that's gonna do it for tonight's video. I've got another video coming up tomorrow night. I know you all were waiting on the next GPU jank video. It is on the way, but I promised Phil from Phil's Computer Lab that I would get this out today, and that's what I'm doing. So be sure you stay tuned for what we've got coming up, and in the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.